Hello everybody, welcome to our Sunday morning worship. It is a wonderful day. Uh, I'm very happy today because I'm alive. And I'm sure you should be happy because you are alive. God has given you the gift of life and the gift of family and the gift of children, the gift of friendship. Uh, you need to thank God for the gift of life. I'm going to play for us a hymn, our opening hymn, as we wait for more people to join us as we make way for more people to join the live streaming service. Our opening hymn is Lead Us Heavenly Father. Welcome everybody, welcome to this glorious day and to our Sunday morning worship. A moment of silence as we begin our morning worship. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. We say our opening prayer together. Almighty God. To whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thought of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel. The Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbors as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolve to keep God's commandments, and to live in love and peace with all. We say together, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbor, in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. May Almighty God, who forgive all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 
we say the Gloria together. Glory be to God on high and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray the collect for today. O God, the strength of all those who put their trust in you, mercifully accept our prayers. And because through the weakness of our mortal nature, we can do no good thing without you, grant us the help of your grace, that in keeping of your commandments, we may please you both in will and deed, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We come to the time of our Bible reading. Our Bible reading today is from the Gospel of Matthew. Matthew chapter 9 from verses 35 through to chapter 10 from verses 1 to 23. Let's hear the reading of God's word. Then Jesus went about all the cities and the villages, teaching in their synagogue and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom of God and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowd, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Then Jesus summoned his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirit to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First, Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother Andrew. James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector, James, the son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus, Simon, the Canaanite, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions, Go nowhere among the Gentiles, and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You have received without payment. Give without payment. Take no gold or silver or copper coins in your belt. No bag for your journey or two tunics, or sandals, or a staff, for the laborers deserve their food. Whatever town or village you enter, find out who in it is worthy, and stay there until you leave. As you enter the house, greet it. If the house is worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it is not worthy, let your peace return to you. If anyone will not welcome you or listen to you, shake off the dust of your feet as you leave that house or town. Truly I tell you, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah on the day of judgment than that town. See, I am sending you out like sheep into the midst of wolves. So be wise as serpents, and be innocent as dove. Beware of them, for they will hand you over to councils and flog you in their synagogue, and you will be dragged before governors and kings because of me as a testimony to them and the Gentiles. 
when they hand you over, do not worry about how you will speak or what you will, you will say. For what you will say will be given to you at that time. For it is not you who speak, but the spirit of your father speaking through you. Brother will betray brother to death, and father his child, and children will rise against parent and have them put to death. And you will be hated by all because of my name. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. When they persecute you in one town, flee to the nest. For truly, I tell you, you will not have gone through all the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. See, I am sending you out like sheep in the midst of wolves. So be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. This presents the likelihood of more active opposition and Jesus here is preparing his disciples for what will happen to them in the future. This and the following verses caution the disciples of troubles, afflictions, persecutions and sufferings that they will endure or experience after the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. I am sending you out as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be wise as serpents and be innocent as doves. Wolves are very cruel and hateful, especially to sheep. Jesus is warning his disciples. He's saying to them, I am sending you as sheep among wolves. Be wise as serpents and be innocent as doves. Sheep and doves are both victim to predators with few defenses. The metaphors here suggest that the disciples were to be transparent and vulnerable to the people that they were going to serve. But the disciples were also to be wise as serpents. The serpents have the ability for self-preservation. If they were to succeed in their apostolic ministry, they were to be wise as the serpent and to have that self-preservation. The disciples were not to be unduly naive about the things around them, resulting in perpetual victimization. If they were naive about the things around them, it means that it will result in them being victimized. So as they went out, Jesus says to them, Be wise as the serpent who has the ability to preserve itself. So have the ability for self-preservation. Be wise and preserve yourself so you can last longer in your ministry in the apostolic office. As a disciple of Jesus Christ and as an apostle in the apostolic office, do not be naive about the things around you because serpents are not naive about their environment. They are very wise about the things around them. Whenever they attack, they go into hiding. As you are ministering as a disciple of Jesus Christ, do not be naive about the things around you, but be informed of the biblical test. Be informed about your environment. Be informed about what goes on in society. That will help you become effective apostle. That will help you become effective disciple of Christ. And you'll be able to proclaim the kingdom of God and its righteousness. Look, I am sending you out as sheep in the midst of wolves. So be wise as serpents and be innocent as doves. Jesus sending the disciples out to witness and to proclaim the gospel meant that there was opposition from the Pharisees, which was like a ravaging wolf. The disciples' hope was to look up to their shepherd, who was Christ himself. I encourage you, therefore, by the mercies of God, that you present yourself before God as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. 
as you live your Christian life, as you live in your workplace, as you go about your business, do not conform to the patterns of the world around you. Do not conform to the patterns of the things around you. Do not conform to the patterns of what goes on around you. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may be able to identify what is good and acceptable and what is the will of God in your life. Brothers and sisters, as you live your Christian life, as you go about your business, as you live with your family, as you live as a disciple of Christ, as you work and minister in the apostolic office, as you work and minister in the prophetic office, I encourage and urge you that God has promised that he will never leave you nor forsake you. His presence will never depart from you. Look, I am sending you out as sheep among wolves. Be wise as serpents and be innocent as dove. As you live as sheep among wolves and as you use the wisdom of the serpent, the wolf is not able to harm you. The wolf is not able to destroy you. The wolf is not able to hurt you because the hand of God Almighty is upon you. The protection of God Almighty is upon you. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day that you have made. We thank you that we are still alive. We thank you for good health. We thank you for our friends and families. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Heavenly Father, we pray for the nations of the world. We pray that your peace, protection, and your blessing will be upon the nations of the world. Almighty God, we remember this day our own nation here, the United Kingdom. We pray for Her Majesty the Queen. We pray for her husband, the Duke of Edinburgh. And we pray for his birthday. We thank you for the government. We pray for our Prime Minister Boris Johnson and his cabinet. We pray that you grant them wisdom and grace as they com continue to make difficult decisions in this time of crisis. We thank you that this coronavirus is subsiding. And we thank you for all the government has done in supporting the process. And so we pray that your wisdom will rest upon them as they work hard for this country to come back to normal. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Heavenly Father, we pray for our NHS. We thank you for doctors and nurses. We thank you for their expertise and their help. We pray for all those who are sick and unwell. We pray that you will send your healing hand and bring healing to all who are sick. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the ministry of the church. We pray for our bishops. We pray for our archdeacons. We pray for priests and deacons. We pray that you pour out your spirit afresh on us. We pray that you will bind us in unity. And we pray that you will, you will bless us with grace as we continue and seek to minister to the people that you have placed in our charge. Heavenly Father, help us to minister effectively in our various parishes. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Almighty God, we pray for those who have died in the faith of Christ. We pray for their families. We pray for their friends. We pray for those who are preparing to say goodbye to their loved ones. We pray that your spirit will rest upon them. We pray that you will give them grace. We pray that you will strengthen their hearts. We pray that you will give them the joy of your eternal salvation. And so we pray for all those who have died and we pray that they will rest in peace and rise in glory. Almighty God, today I bring the needs of my parishness before you. I pray for every member of my parish. I pray that they will know your grace. I pray that they will know your favor. I pray that they will know your abundance blessing. Father, I pray that you will protect every one of them. Father, may your blessings continue to be upon them. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Brothers and sisters, Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and we share his peace. May the peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Let us offer one another the sign of peace by waving to the screen. <laughs> 
a moment of silence as we start our Holy Communion prayer. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living Word, through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Savior. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh as your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin. He lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arm for us upon the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take it. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way after supper, he took the cup of wine and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory. We celebrate this memorial of our redemption as we offer you this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. We bring before you this bread and this cup as we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send your Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one your kingdom, all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of all the saints may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our honor and glory be yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. As our Savior taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. 
grant us peace. Let us say the prayer before communion. Most merciful Lord, your love compels us to come in. Our hands were unclean, our hearts were unprepared. We were not fit to eat the crumbs from your table. But you, Lord, are the God of our salvation and share your bread with sinners. So cleanse and feed us with the precious body and blood of your Son, that he may live in us and we in him, and that we with the whole company of Christ may sit and eat in your kingdom. Amen. Jesus is the Lamb of God who take away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. Brothers and sisters, we come to the time of communion. I'm going to take Holy Communion on behalf of everybody who is watching. While I do that, I'll be playing a hymn for us to reflect in silence. Brothers and sisters, we say the prayer after communion together. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still afar off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love and gave us grace and opened the gates of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We whom the Spirit lights give lights to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we have come to the end of our Sunday morning worship. I will encourage you to continue to look at the link above this live stream video. Um, I have put the web page link up there. Please click on the link. It will take you to our donation page on the website where you can put your collections and make all your donation through uh, the online giving. So please, I will encourage you, please click the link which will take you to our donation page and you will be able to make 
your donation and make your collection what you will normally put in the loose plate as we support the ministry of our church in Eastwood. May the Lord bless you as you do that. The blessing. May the peace of God which surpasses all understanding keep your heart and mind in the knowledge of God and of his son Jesus Christ. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. I'm going to play for us our final hymn. Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory, great things he has. Brothers and sisters, we come to the end of our service. Have a very good week and I shall see you on Tuesday. God bless you. Peace. Shalom. <laughs>